my honour to present Lynn McTavish for the honorary degree of Doctor of Science of the University of Brighton. Lynn McTavish, in recognition for your contribution to conservation in South Africa and your promotion of conservation science, I award upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Science from the University of Brighton. Would you like to address the audience? I would, thank you. I'm a very shy girl from Zimbabwe. I was so shy that I had to go to speech lessons to project my voice. But on the saddest day of my life, I found my voice. And here I am standing in front of you today. Sitting, weeping next to my beloved rhino, Winnie. Winnie had been brutally killed by poachers for her horn. Rhino poaching around the world has reached epidemic proportions, with three rhinos being killed every day. The tragedy of these killings and what the rest of the world don't know is the brutality in which these animals are being killed. Sadly, most of these rhinos are still alive while the poachers hack into their faces with machetes, axes, and pangas. Uh, Winnie herself was still alive. They severed her spinal cord so she couldn't run away while they hacked into her face. The tragedy about Winnie was I'd seen her being born. I saw her when she was two hours old. She was just the wobbly cough, and I watched her grow, and we knew that she had been impregnated by one of our bulls, and rhinos are pregnant for 18 months. She was 17 and a half months pregnant, and we had been starting to count down the days until she had her calf. When I found her just a bloated corpse with a fully formed calf in her, she was 17 and a half months pregnant. And I just sat and I cried with her and I promised to be her voice. I promised that she hadn't died in vain and that somehow maybe her story would save the rhino from extinction. So on that day, I found my purpose. And I think sometimes the hardest things that you go through in life will give you your purpose. Since then, for the last four years, I've been working with scientists, with Earthwatch, to try and highlight the plight of the rhino. And when his story has been on the front page of the LA Times, it's been on ABC News and on Nightline. And it just goes to show if you have enough passion, your voice does count. Never think that just as one individual, you can't make a difference. Every single one of you can make a difference. And my passion is rhino. Yours might be something entirely different. But I hope that you find your purpose and are brave enough to fight for something. For the past 18 years, I've been extremely fortunate to be surrounded by some of UK's top scientists. Some of them are sitting here tonight and they've taught me everything I know about science. I never had the opportunity to go to university but through them, I've learned everything that I know. And more importantly, I've learned how important science is. Um, science can change policies. You can lobby government. It gives you the information that you need. It's hard evidence that without the science, you cannot change these policies. And I'm very fortunate to have so many scientists working with me and joining my cause, and I do believe that we can save the rhino. Lynn McTavish from Zimbabwe at the University of Brighton. And her story is one of those incorporated in L.A. Larkin's new novel, Prey, launched just a few days ago. Larkin lives in Sydney, and her stories are thrilling, and so is her research. I stare at the steaming pile of rhino poo and the blue latex gloves on my hands and the empty test tube I'm holding. How, I wonder, will this help save South Africa's rhinos from extinction? 
I'm a volunteer at a small private wildlife reserve in South Africa that has teamed up with researchers from the University of Brighton to monitor the impact on the rhinos of dehorning. This process involves vets removing the visible section of a rhino's horn in the hope it will deter poachers. My role is to collect rhino poo for testing and to monitor the animal's behaviour pre and post the dehorning. But there's another reason for my visit to South Africa. I'm researching my latest thriller, Prey, in which a journalist risks her life to expose a powerful criminal syndicate driving the illegal rhino horn trade. What I discovered was a trail of corruption that allows South African horn to cross borders and enter Vietnam and other markets, as well as the vastly different views about what should be done to stop rhino poaching. Private wildlife reserves are losing the battle with well-armed poachers who are funded by extremely wealthy Asian criminal syndicates. Over the last 30 years, poaching has increased 400%. Poachers have rifles, often AK-47s. They use packs of dogs to hunt animals. They have jeeps. They even have helicopters. The poachers are usually ex-soldiers. This doesn't mean the rhino's death is fast. Poachers kill rhinos at night and stealth is critical. Gunshots will alert the poaching patrols to their presence, so they tend to use other, more brutal methods. The first rhino to be killed by poachers at this reserve was a female, fondly known as Cheeky Cow, who had a young calf with her. She was surrounded by dogs, Her spinal cord was severed, so her back legs were paralysed, and the horn was macheted from her face while she was still alive. The calf was also butchered. A more recent trend is for poachers to take the animal's ears too, because wealthy Vietnamese businessmen want to know the animal was killed for them, and the ears provide the proof. Every 15 hours, a rhino is killed in South Africa. And even though the government statistics show poached rhino deaths declined in 2019, this decline is not enough to save the white rhino from extinction. The problem I discovered is that private reserves do not receive any government funding and protecting their rhinos from well-funded poachers is an expensive business that they can no longer afford. The private reserve where I'm volunteering cannot even afford to replace the broken water pumps for their watering holes. Everyone helping them to dehorn their rhinos are doing so without payment. And that includes vets, the security guards and the helicopter pilot. Everyone here at the dehorning day argued that unless they are permitted to trade internationally the horn that vets have humanely removed, they won't be able to keep the reserves going. This, of course, is a highly contentious argument, one that animal charities and the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, otherwise known as CITES, has so far disagreed with. There has been a ban in place on the international trade in horn since 1977. But many involved in protecting rhinos argue that the ban simply isn't working. They believe legalising the international trade and setting up a carefully monitored trading house will devalue the product and take the power away from the criminals. Then they can feed the money back into protecting the rhinos. Rhino Horn currently fetches around US $60,000 per kilo, which is on a par with heroin and cocaine. Last year, the South African National Biodiversity Institute published a paper arguing that lifting the ban on international trade may be the only way to save white rhinos. The majority of animal charities, I discovered, have a very different view. Many argue that ready availability of low-priced horn would only encourage more people to purchase it. 
and would therefore result in an increase in rhino poaching. I only hope that animal conservation charities, CITES, and those protecting rhinos can come to an agreement that is effective soon because time is running out for these magnificent creatures. The wildlife reserve mentioned in this report has requested anonymity. They are trying to stay off the radar of rhino poachers. Trafficking animals or parts of them are trade worth $20 billion a year or more, mostly so rich men can get horny or some traditional medicines can pretend to be effective and scientific. L.A. Larkin's new thriller is titled Prey. It's superb and very, very violent.